Yo, what is up guys? So today we're going to be showcasing off the Senka Archetype and the Senka Archetype is unfortunately not ready yet. I think it's too early on for them to be even viable in the game. So if you guys haven't really seen them, I did cover all of them in a video basically when they were revealed. However, I don't see the point of this Archetype basically being shown off. Uh, right now, it's way too early. Uh, right now, all you can really do is go for, I guess, a rank 4 play. Maybe you can try to go for a rank 7 play. Uh, but for the most part, I don't think that that is going to be the way to really play the deck. Uh, what it tries to do is make it so when your opponent has more monsters than you, you get some type of bonus effect. And we'll go over all of the effects here, but I want to showcase off some gameplay so you guys can maybe get an idea of how they play. But at the end of the day, they kind of remind me of a bootleg Fire Fist. But, like, Fire Fist got a lot more newer support. These guys don't even have a link, they don't even have an exceed. Like, their boss monster is basically, well, they got kind of two boss monsters. They have one where you're able to uh, send a um, card um, from the field of the hand to special summon another Senka if your opponent has more. There's one that lets you pop card, and there's another one that makes it so you can attack two monsters as long as your opponent has more monsters than you do. And there's another one where it gains some boost if your opponent has more monsters, you get some small amount of boost. We have one to basically search out another Senka monster that is a uh, different one, but again, it's not gonna be something that it's gonna be super good. However, the three visit, this card already gets you free utility, but when it goes to the graveyard, and some of them are kind of like Fire Fist where you get to send a face up, you know, one to do some type of an effect. This one, when it goes to the graveyard, you're going to be able to special nice Psycho Monster from your hand, which is, of course, the card that you're more likely going to be adding in the first place with it. But at the end of the day, what the heck does this archetype do? Really nothing too much. They also happen to have a pretty decent trap card, though where it makes it so you get to protect your monsters for a turn. And the goal is to make it so your opponent has a bunch of monsters and you let your opponent have those monsters and then you go on your turn and you're trying to disrupt their plays. But more than often, we know that the monster effect will never go off because they're just gonna go ahead and negate the monster coming out in the first place because that's generally how Yu-Gi-Oh is played or you'll just get OTK'd. They do have a card that tries to prevent them from getting OTK'd, which again, we'll go over the archetype, but I just Again, want to show some quick gameplay off. Because the deck doesn't rely on anything in the extra deck, you can definitely run Extravagance because it doesn't require anything. In fact, there's a true Draco engine over here, so you can go ahead and pop some stuff. It's okay. Like I said, at the end of the day, uh, there's not going to be any good way, I would say, to play the deck at a competitive level as of right now. I mean, again, the deck does not OTK. It doesn't really stun. There is supposed to be a card that stuns, but it requires your opponent to actually make a board, and then you're successfully going off with your plays, which that probably not going to be happening. Maybe with Dark Ruler no more, uh, but at that point you've already negated the monster's effect, so it's not really like going to serve any value, but uh, thanks to my boy Zeke and uh, you say YGO Pro for this play, but I want to go ahead and just hop into the deck uh, right here because I had a few other plays, but it's basically the same thing. All you really do in this deck is basically spam the board with monsters and then hope that your opponent doesn't stop anything. Again, against any meta deck, you would get absolutely destroyed. Uh, but this is a card that really is supposed to help them, uh, but it's a trap card, which is a little bit too slow, but it makes it so if your Senka uh, monster battles, your opponent can't activate spells or traps until the end of the damage step. I wish it was your opponent cannot activate card effects until the end of the damage step because that'd be so much more useful but then on top of that at the start of your opponent's battle phase you can send this face-up card from the spell trap zone to the graveyard and your opponent's monsters cannot target senka monsters um for attacks this turn so basically you summon your monsters they survive and then your opponent is supposed to make a bunch of monsters and apparently not use their effects to get rid of your monsters which we all know isn't going to be happening but that's basically what the whole archetype is supposed to be uh trying to do and then on top of that, you happen to have the Senka Legend, um, the Sun Liu Alliance, which makes so if you control two or more Senka monsters with different attributes, which is really easy to do. Um, at least at the moment, that it's just uh, going to be wind and water. But I'm sure they'll get fire, earth, like they'll, they'll get the whole works, right? Uh, but you can declare an attribute and monsters your opponent currently controls with that attribute, which makes it terrible. Um, cannot activate their effects until the end of this turn, even if this card leaves the field. And then if your opponent still summons a monster, or if you activate a Senka monster's effect, you can make all Senka monsters gain 300 attack uh, for each Senka monster. Um, you control, uh, where is it? Uh, you control until the end of this turn, even if uh, even if the card leaves the field. So basically, this is the go-to card to stop other plays. But again, first off, you have to summon both of them successfully, and some will activate some other effects to maybe go for a card, which your opponent will then negate, and then at that point you can't utilize this card which again is part of the problem with this archetype. And you would then be able to declare only one attribute. 
yes, I am aware that it does stop them, but there, there's just better options is what I'm really trying to say than just running this card. Like, I'd rather just run Dark Ruler Noir. You just stop everything. You don't have to control those two Senka monsters. Uh, again, I know that it kind of supports their archetype because they do have to have bonus effects. So I'll briefly go over their effects because uh, the replay is really fast. Uh, I didn't get to go over all their effects, but this guy, he, he boosts up, and if you control two or more, you get to special summon it. And then this guy can attack twice uh, as long as your opponent controls more monsters than you do, which, again, is how the deck wants to try to play. Um, and then if uh, your opponent controls a monster, you can just special summon it. Uh, and then, if your opponent controls more monsters than you, you can target one monster your opponent controls and destroy it. This card, however, I feel like is kind of good. This card might see some play. It almost reminds me kind of like a Pinkatrops, um, but yeah, you can special summon it, and then uh, your opponent can't target other Senka monsters you control with card effects, but it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, but yeah, I think this card might see some actual play. Uh, and then we also have to have Sun Mu over here, so when you the Sun monster, your opponent monster can't target this card for attacks, but really, it's you can send one card from your hand or field to the graver to add another Senka monster from your deck to your hand. So they're basically going to search out things, and if another Senka monster effect is activated, you get to uh, target one monster your opponent controls and bounce that back. So you have some utility again if your opponent happens to have stuff. And then Zhao Gong over here lets you target a continuous uh, spell trap, send it to the graveyard, and then add any Senka spell trap. And at the moment, there is just isn't uh, that many Senka spells and traps. There's literally two spells and one trap, which we're playing like every single copy of, uh, just to get the gameplay here. Uh, and then we have uh, Liu Zhuan over here, and basically his effect is if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can send one card from your hand uh, or field to the graveyard to spell summon another Senka monster. So you can utilize, uh, I've even seen people do like that, was a Dark Coffin. Uh, it's just. Again, it's just not uh, really that strong as right now. Because again, we don't happen to have like every single card I think that we're going to be getting. But this archetype, I guarantee we'll get Fire and Earth later down the line. But again, um, the effects are basically all about having like the Canoe Spell and Trap. So you, you guys saw the Exit Time Knight come out. But technically, with the effect of when this card goes to the grave, you're going to have the Special one. It kind of helps out with that. But this lets you target continuous spell and trap you control, send it to the graveyard, and then you can add from your graveyard to your hand a Senka spell trap with a different name from the sent card. So let's it, it's you basically recycle this card. However, this card does have a bonus effect. Um, I'm gonna move this over here real quick so I can actually mouse over it. Okay, uh, but it has the effect when a opponent's monster declares an attack, you can banish this and special summon a Senka from your deck. This card is actually really good for that effect. Uh, but for the most part, I, again, I feel like the deck is kind of underwhelming now, but there's just three Ash, three Extravagance, uh, we have the, the Utopia lineup over here, because that's basically a win condition. And then we have Tensu, two copies of Heritage, three copies of Tanky, and then we got the uh, Draco Phoenix, just because you're going to send the face-up stuff, might as well get some value out of uh, other cards. And then, uh, this is the three visit, this one lets you, uh, target one of the monsters and add a different one, so it lets you say, this is almost like another searcher for the deck, and then Tensu is obviously for the additional summon. And then you also have this card being uh, continuous, so that's kind of nice for that. Um, then there's just Lost Window over here, and then we have the Champion's uh, Bravery. But as far as the extra goes, I guess the Utopia is like the only important card. You could definitely throw in like the Nightmares, but I feel like the deck is underwhelming as of right now, and I think that they are not really playable. Uh, but you guys can let me know your thoughts down below, and if you guys have some uh, other thoughts on this, or if you have other builds, feel free to go ahead and send it into hnsreplays.gmail.com. I'd we'll love to see if this deck is actually better, but at the moment, I just think that this deck is currently not ready uh, to be actually played, but I'll give you guys gameplay because I, I just don't know why sometimes they release like a core set uh, of the archetype and, it, and there's like a lot of cards, right? There's a decent amount, but it's just simply not usable. At the end of the day, it reminds me too much of Fire Fist. Um, and again, Fire Fist have better support. But uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it. If you're new, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell if you want to see more new Yu-Gi-Oh! gameplays. Thanks for tuning in and peace.